All right, welcome to the last lecture in Unit 13 on water. In this one, we're going to go a little bit weird. We're going to look at um, changes in water level of large bodies of water, uh, whether they are lakes or the oceans, and those are tides. And to talk about tides, we have to talk about the big cause of tides, and that is the moon. Now, this is actually Lecture 3, not Lecture 2, and it's all about tides and the moon. So we're going to give some basics on the moon first, and then we're going to move into how the moon causes tides and, and different tidal variations that we see throughout the, the lunar cycle, which is as the moon moves around the Earth. We're going to start by just talking about the moon and divide, defining some, some um, basic terms just to get an idea of what we're talking about. A satellite is either a natural or an artificial body, so sometimes these are man-made, some satellites are man-made, some are natural and, and occur in nature. And it, it, it's a body that revolves around a planet. In this case, we're talking about Earth. A moon is a natural body that revolves around a planet, and it has less mass than the planet does. So the moon of a planet is smaller than the planet it revolves around, but it could be bigger than other planets in that solar system. Just the moon is smaller than the planet it's revolving around. A lot of the uh, planets in our solar system have moons, and our specific moon, the one that, that orbits the Earth, we have been studying since the 50s and 60s and into the 70s through the Apollo missions and, and other things. So We'll uh, kind of leave it at that right now. Our moon has an elliptical orbit, much like the Earth's orbit around the sun. It's not a circle. All right, so it's slightly elliptical. It's a... It's a uh, a little bit like an oval, all right, which means it has a point where it is farthest from Earth, and that's called the apogee, and then there's also a point where it is the closest to Earth, that's called the perigee. All right, big thing to know from this page is that the distance between the Earth and the Moon varies as um, the Moon orbits the Earth. Here is that picture of the Moon and Earth system. You can see at the perigee, the Moon's farther away. Here's where it would be at the apogee when the Moon is closer. This yellow line all right, is showing um, the path which the Moon and Earth together follow around the Sun. It's known as the barycenter. So if you take the mass of the Earth, mass of the Moon, figure it out where the average mass of the two of them would fall that orbits the sun, it's slightly off center of the Earth. All right, and so this yellow line shows the Earth and Moon's pass around, path around the sun, and as the Moon moves, this whole, the Earth moves as well, and, and everything's kind of moving around. Now the moon, besides revolving around the Earth, it also rotates. All right, and by coincidence, this is not, is not always the case for everything. The moon's revolution around the Earth, how long it takes to go all the way around the Earth, takes the same amount of time as it takes for the moon to spin. So we always see the same side of the moon. However, the part of the moon that faces the sun and, and, and gets sunlight changes as it orbits the Earth. Just we are, the same side of the moon is always facing us. Because of these events, we have different phases of the moon. We see different amounts of moon. All right. They are split into two groups, the waxing phases and the waning phases. And the waxing phases is when the moon is getting brighter. Alright, said to be waxing, the lighted part of the moon is increasing. Wax on, alright? And the first little bit, the first little sliver of moon we get is called a crescent. And when that crescent 
is on the right side All right, the right hand side as you look in the sky, if you see the moon and the, the, the bright part of the moon is on the right side of the moon, you are in a waxing phase. So first you get a waxing crescent, and then you get a semicircle, and that's called the first quarter. It's the semicircle on the right. When you get more than a semicircle, all right, but the dark part still on the left, the brightest, the whole right side of the moon is um, is bright. We have what is called the waxing gibbous. And finally, the full moon is what we have when the entire side of the moon pointing at us is illuminated by the sun. So that means the earth is between the sun and the moon. We'll see a picture in a minute. The other phases are called waning phases. So those waning phases are what are happening as the moon appears to be decreasing in sign in size. So it's getting darker. And so this is the bright on the left. All right, and they happen in the reverse of the Um, happens the reverse of the waxing phases. So first you get a moon that's larger than a semicircle. There's now darkness on the right, and you have the waning gibbous phase. Then you see a semicircle, but it's a semicircle on the left. That is known as the last quarter phase sometimes the third quarter phase of the moon. And when only a sliver of the left side, the near side, when only a sliver of the moon is visible, we get the waning crescent phase. And then after that, no moon is visible. No lighted area of the moon is visible is a new moon. That brings us to this picture, which is just like the picture that you will see on your test. All right, here's the sun's rays. So the sun is way over here where the little dancing red dot is. All right, I know that because it says sun rays here and I can see the yellow sun rays. All right, now, when the moon's between the earth and the sun, the part of the moon that's getting the sunlight is facing away from the earth. That's why we don't see a moon. The side the side of the the moon facing the earth isn't getting any light. So we don't see anything. And then as that moon slowly moves and goes around, what we end up seeing is we see just a little sliver on the right and then half the right hand side and then almost the whole thing and eventually we see a full moon. We see the entire moon that we can see illuminated, and that's because the sun's rays are hitting on the side of the moon that's facing us. And then we get the waning phases, where as the moon continues to move, darkness creeps in, and again it creeps in on the right. So we get mostly lit with a little sliver of darkness on the right, and we get half lit, Right here, the, the last quarter, sometimes called the third quarter, where the entire light, bright lighted side of the moon's on the left, and then we get just a little sliver on the left, and that again is a crescent phase. So every time we've, we, we see the same setup. So wax on, and it waxes on the right, wane off on the left is where, is where you, you see the, the brightness of the moon. So you need to know these eight stages, these eight phases of the moon. Now, in a perfect system, without the earth moving, it would take 27 and a third days for the moon to rotate around the earth. However, because the earth orbits, all right, they orbit 
around the sun, it takes 29 and a half days to go from one new moon to the next. So it takes an extra, a little over an extra two days, about two and a quarter days. And so that's why sometimes you see the moon rising in the morning or rising in the middle of the afternoon. It's because there's this this half day period from one new moon to the next. Now, as the moon moves, its gravity affects the Earth. These are both massive beings, and gravity is the attraction between any two objects with mass. When you have something really massive like the Earth and moon, their gravity affects each other. So, gravitational effects of mostly the moon, but, you know, the sun as well, because that's a huge body, but it's farther away, um, cause tides, all right? And tides is the moon pulling the water on one side of the earth. All right? It creates a little bubble effect on the other side of the earth. But, but tides are created because the moon's gravity is pulling water on the side of the earth that it's closest to. So as a result, on the earth's near side, on the side close to the moon, the ocean bulges slightly, which causes a high tide where that bulge is, which is where whatever part of the Earth is facing the moon. At low tides, which are halfway between the two high tides, um, low tides form as the ocean water is perpendicular to the moon. We'll see a picture in a minute. So, high tides equals the part of the earth facing the moon low is a right angle to the moon so we can measure these tides and we come up with the tidal range which is the difference between high and low tides all right, now there are two tidal bulges. One when the earth is, the side of the earth is close to the moon, and then one when the, the moon is on the exact opposite side of the earth. So oceans have two high tides, two low tides. And tides occur 50 minutes later each day. The high tide, we can, we can track it, and it's 50 minutes later than it was the day before. Or, if you look at it this way, from one high tide to the next, from one high tide to the next, there is 12 hours and 25 minutes between high tides. So there's two high tides in a 24-hour period, roughly, 24-hour and 50-minute period, and there's two low tides in that same 24-hour 24-hour, 50-minute period, all right? And tidal ranges can vary from, face to fa from place to place. Um, some places it might only be a couple feet. Some places it can be um, 10, 15 feet or more um, from low tide to high tide. There are also... Special types of so tides where uh, the moon and the sun work together. When, they were, when they're all in a straight line, it's a sun moon earth line or a sun earth moon line, um, which is the full moon and the new moon. A sun, moon, earth is a new moon. And then a full moon is the sun, earth, moon. During those times, 
the combined gravitational pull of the sun and moon work together, and we get higher high tides and lower low tides. These are called spring times, and they happen twice a month, whenever there's a full moon and whenever there's a new moon. The opposite of a spring tide happens during the first and third quarter phases, the first and last quarter phases. Alright, and the moon and sun are at right angles in relation to the earth. Again, we'll see a picture in a minute. So the forces of the sun and moon work against each other, and so you get a smaller tidal range. The high tides are not as high, the low tides are not as low. And these have the coolest name in all of this whole moon stuff. These are called neap tides. Neap. Now you're going to come in and, and be saying that and driving me nuts, Jarrett and Tommy. But anyway, so you have these neap tides, and so these neap tides come in, and the the tidal range is not as as large as it is normally. Whereas in a spring tide, the tidal range is greater, higher highs, lower lows. And here's a picture. All right, as you can see with the moon right here, the side of the Earth facing the moon has strong pull of water. All right, the opposite side has a pull of water. In this case, what we've got is we've got a straight line between Sun, Earth, and Moon. That's at the new moon and the full moon. Whereas during the neap tides, there is a right angle with the Earth at the center of it. All right, between the third quarter, first quarter moon, and the sun. All right, there's right angles, and so these are neap tides versus spring tides. And that's about it. That's like a crash course on the moon and tides. Know what causes spring tides. Know what causes neap tides. Know that there's roughly two high tides a day, two low tides a day. Tidal times differ by 50 minutes from day to day because it takes... 50 minutes more for the moon to rise from one day to the next. Know the eight phases of the moon. And know what a tidal range is. And if you know those few things, you'll be fine for the test and subsequently the exam after that. If you have any questions, write them down. Bring them in. Let us answer them. All right. Have a good night.